while back I saw a video by Entertain the Elk about the death of community. The video got me thinking, and in turn, it got me rewatching. I was curious to discover a more conclusive answer. I had an idea what the answer was going in, but went in with an open mind. To quote creator Dan Harmon in the final episode of the show, some episodes too conceptual to be funny. I believe season 3 marks the true beginning of the end for Community. While not yet buried at that point, it created the circumstances for its eventual demise. To summarize it briefly, a concept episode is an episode that leaves the traditional format of the show. Community became well known for its concept episodes, but it wasn't always this way. Season 1 and 2 are almost entirely grounded in reality, with only brief breaks into the world of conceptualism. Even though some episodes can be considered parodies of movies and genres, in this case I'm more interested in episodes that leave the format of a more traditional sitcom behind entirely. I would also like to quickly disclaim that I don't think concept episodes are bad in and of themselves and there are many that I enjoy, but I believe they are a symptom and cause of larger issues. I'd also like to point out that losing focus on characters isn't a community problem, but a problem with television in general. South Park, The Simpsons, and Breaking Bad are all examples of shows that begin focusing on spectacle over characters. South Park loses its focus on dumbass kids being dumbass kids to be large epic parodies featuring topical references. The Simpsons went from a dysfunctional family to a vessel used to shill irrelevant celebrities. And Breaking Bad lost touch with a man doing bad things for what he thought was a good reason, to planes exploding in the sky and bombs turning people into Two-Face. Very few long-form stories can consistently focus on characters, with one example I can think of being The Sopranos. The Sopranos never stops being about Tony, a man who is beginning to feel old, outdated, and unappreciated, and his family, both literal and figurative, and the way they grow and change as a result of the larger events that happen. The show never becomes about Tony whacking people, it is always about Tony, regardless of what he does. Let's start with the small breakdown. I'd like to go a little more in depth on the episodes here by briefly summarizing all 25 episodes from season 1. Pilot. A disbarred lawyer tries to cheat his way through his classes at an incompetently run community college and makes a fake Spanish study group to get with a girl but the group decides to become a real study group when they realize they're all losers. Spanish 101. Jeff is paired with Pierce for a project and the girls protest Guatemala. Introduction to film. Jeff takes a blow-off class and Britta pays for Abed's film classes while he makes a movie about his life. Social psychology. Jeff and Shirley mock Britta's boyfriend and Annie assists in a psychology experiment. Advanced criminal law. Britta is caught cheating and Jeff defends her in a community college court while Pierce writes the school a theme song. Football, feminism, and you. The Dean blackmails Jeff into getting Troy to rejoin football, Shirley and Britta go to the bathroom, and the Dean and Pierce design a mascot for the school. Introduction to Statistics Annie hosts a Day of the Dead party, Pierce takes drug, and Jeff hits on a statistic professor. Home Economics Jeff moves in with Abed, Annie helps Troy get ready for a date, Pierce joins a band. Debate 109 Jeff joins a debate team with Annie, Pierce tries hypnotherapy on Britta, and the group thinks Abed's movies are predicting the future. Environmental Science Jeff tries to help Chang get back with his wife, Pierce helps Shirley with public speaking, and Abed and Troy look for a rat. The Politics of Human Sexuality Annie tries to learn how to put on a condom for the STD fair she helps organize, Troy and Abed compete in sports, Jeff and Pierce double date. Comparative Religion The group finds out they don't agree on religion and Jeff fights a bully. Investigative Journalism Buddy, played by Jack Black, forces himself into the group. The Dean forces Jeff to run the school newspaper while Jeff tries to relax more. Interpretive Dance Jeff dates his teacher, Britta and Troy are in dance class. Romantic Expressionism Britta and Jeff try to break up Annie and her boyfriend, everyone else watches bad movies. Communication Studies Britta leaves an embarrassing voicemail on Jeff's phone and he and Abed try to restore the balance. Annie and Shirley try to prank Chang. Physical education. Jeff gets in a fight with his billiards instructor. The girls try to find a girl they think likes Abed. Basic genealogy. Pierce's stepdaughter visits the school and Jeff hooks up with her. Britta meets Troy's grandma. Abed and Shirley's families meet. Beginner pottery. Jeff is convinced a classmate in his pottery class is a seasoned potter taking beginner pottery to impress people. Shirley, Troy, and Pierce take a boating class in a parking lot. The science of illusion. Britta accidentally drops a cadaver out of a window while attempting an April Fool's prank. Annie and Shirley become temporary security guards. Contemporary American poultry. The group creates a mafia to control the flow of chicken figures. The art of discourse. Shirley gets Pierce kicked out of the group. Jeff and Britta fight high schoolers. Troy and Abed act out college cliches. Modern warfare. The entire school plays a game of paintball in the college for priority registration. English as a second language. Chang reveals his teaching degree is fake and he doesn't know Spanish. He's fired and replaced by a stricter teacher. Troy founds out he's a naturally gifted plumber and the school tries to recruit him. Pascal's Triangle Revisited. 
Jeff must choose between his professor and Britta after they both confess to him. Troy tries to move in with one of his friends, and he considers moving to Delaware. A good majority of these episodes have fairly realistic, if sometimes silly, plot lines. Only two of these episodes really stick out, Contemporary American Poultry and Modern Warfare. I personally thoroughly enjoy both of these episodes, I just wanted to illustrate the change in seasonal composition. In this case, 2 out of 25, or about 8% of episodes, fall into the conceptual category. For season 2, I'll save some time and not run through all the episodes. You can follow along on this graphic I've made on screen, with concept episodes highlighted in red. In this case, we see that 6 out of 24 episodes in Season 2 could be called concept episodes for about 25%. Meanwhile, Season 3 reaches an almost peak capacity of 14 out of 22, or about 64%. After Harmon was fired following Season 3, successors attempted to fall into this pit of concept episodes dug by the original team. Part of what makes Season 4 so miserable is its attempt to replicate the lightning in a bottle of these high concept episodes. An incredible 8 of 13 episodes in Season 4, 61% of the show's concept episodes. While the percentage is less, the short order season makes it so there's almost no break from the concept episodes. I feel in some way the showrunners of Season 4 had unfortunate shoes to fill, as by the time it was their turn to take a crack at Community, the concept episodes are what the fans wanted and what they had to try to deliver on. Here's a graph for the rest of the series, although I feel I've already made my point. It's at this point I'd like to make two more points. One. High concept episodes usually overtake the ability to tell stories about characters. As plotlines run out, characters begin to take a backseat to the concept. The writers are forced to constantly escalate scenarios endlessly in order to create new situations for the characters to be in, which causes... Number 2. Characters are forced to share the spotlight with the concept. This usually results in characters getting less time and development, which means they need to be condensed, flanderized, if you will, into their simplest parts. Come on guys, let's wrap this up. I don't want to. Me neither. Why not? This is gonna be the last thing we ever do together. Can't stop. Doesn't that kind of solve your problem? The realization that you like each other so much you hit each other with pillows forever? In a lot of ways, concept episodes prove that a show has run its course. As the show turns to reliance on wacky episodes and concepts, it slowly stops focusing on characters. By the time Season 3 began, Community had worked through a lot of the normal plot lines it could explore. The entire study group had been subject to their relations with one another, and in a way, concept episodes were a replacement for grounded stories and characters. Season 1 and 2 feature absurdly high quality writing for a network sitcom, with an arrested development level of wit and speed. Unfortunately, while the problem of running out of grounded plots was alleviated, the show became increasingly hard to approach for the average viewer. In-jokes, nonsensical plots, and becoming increasingly over the top likely didn't help the viewership of a show that was always on the rocks. Despite this, the season 4 showrunners felt compelled to try to hang on to their one lifeline, the small but vocal fanbase of community to keep the show alive. Despite the efforts of the writers to remain unpredictable, the show itself would begin to run out of concepts. Paintball episodes constantly is the most egregious example, but I think that season 5 and 6 slowly attempting to wind the show back down to its simpler roots speaks loud enough. As new characters were added and as the roster was shrunk, it was easier to explore characters than it was to explore concepts. Trouble. All you need to do is... Feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. <laughs> Stupid sexy Flanders. Flanderization, a word thrown around a lot when talking about television. Named after the Simpsons character Ned Flanders, generally means that a character that hangs around long enough will be boiled down to their most basic elements or catchphrases, and reduced to a caricature of themselves. I think Community suffered from this pretty hard, and as I stated earlier, I placed the blame for this onto an emphasis on concept over character. I'd like to touch on a few characters, Choi, Britta, the Dean, Chang, and lastly Pierce, although not quite for the same reason. Choi's ultimate failure was reduction in role. While he was originally a dumb jock who fell into a group of weirdos and became best friends with a nerd, Troy was ultimately reduced to being Abed's sidekick. While they attempted to give him relationships with Jeff and Pierce, by season 3, Troy had two modes, playing Abed 2 or doing the air conditioner plot. The air conditioner plot was always a very blatant excuse to get Troy away from Abed. In general, Troy episodes revolve around Abed making problems and Troy either joining him, protecting him, or cleaning up after him. It's also worth noting that Abed himself also slowly moved from the movie-loving Aspie to full-blown screeching autist around the same time. Britta's development is baffling to say the least. Early on, while slightly oblivious, Britta served as the heart of the group. She was caring and tried to keep things together. By season 3, she's the biggest moron in the main cast and is reduced to being the group punching bag. Jeff has moved on to Annie, 
Shakari and Abed have each other, Shirley is rarely notable, and Pierce is the villain. Britta is usually left floating in space unless they need someone to do something stupid to laugh at. The Dean is pretty easy to cut to the chase about. He went from an incompetent Dean, rarely seen and mostly only heard through goofy PA announcements, peppered with wonderful occasional appearances. By season 3, Dean was nothing but the funny gay costume man, who came in to say something silly and then vanished into thin air. Chang Chang Chang. Originally one of the driving forces of many episodes. A subtle villain, douchey, manipulative, and controlling, but shown to be not as bad as he seemed at times. Chang was a realistic villain and someone most people have dealt with in real life. His popularity resulted in him sticking around even after he had stopped being a teacher. After that, Chang slowly slid to being perhaps the worst character on the show. A homeless schizo living in the school, sliding around the vents covered in butter, spouting cartoony non sequiturs, and becoming a comically over-the-top villain ending in attempted murder at the end of season 3. It's clear the writers had no idea what to do with Chang but kept him around anyway. He was a convenient way to create conflict at first, but became nothing but a supervillain. Lastly, I'd like to highlight Pierce, as a character who actually became better. Pierce started off in the fairly generic role of out-of-touch boomer but slowly morphed into a villain. It doesn't always work out, and there are times where they make him a little too dementia patient. Pierce serves as a wonderful foil for the group, and I think his departure is one of the biggest hits the show takes. Dan Harmon said the show died when Gambino left, but I believe Pierce's death had a bigger impact. No matter the situation, Pierce could be used to escalate it, but he also had plenty of wholesome moments with characters too, especially at times when he treats Jeff as a son. In the end, I believe that Season 3 marked the beginning of the end for Community. While Season 4 may have buried it, and Season 3 had good episodes, it was the third season that built the shaky foundation that the last three seasons had to build on. I'd also like to say Season 5 and 6 are fine. They're nowhere near the peak of the show, but they're decent. Community's life and death are a strange and rocky trail of low ratings and bad decisions. But that's my take on things, and I'd love to hear how stupid and wrong I am below. Thanks for watching.